Good evening and a very warm welcome to Canterbury Cathedral for this Office of Choral Evensong, which tonight is sung for us by the lay clerks and girl choristers of our cathedral choir. As many of you are aware, we are usually in the beautiful choir surroundings for Choral Evensong, but tonight we've come down here to the wonderful nave. The reason being is that our lift is out of action at the moment and we want to be as accessible as we possibly can, particularly to those people who have wheelchairs. So that's why we're down here. Warm welcome to those of you who join us here in the nave tonight and to the many more who join us online. You're all most welcome. Please do bring your prayers and petitions to this act of worship together. This evening, the choir will sing Psalm 78, which can be found on page 443 of the small red prayer book. We stand for the Gloria at the end.
sixth chapter of the book of the prophet Amos, beginning at the first verse. Alas, for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria, the notables of the first of the nations, to whom the house of Israel resorts. Cross over to Calne and see. From there go to Hamath the Great, then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are you better than these kingdoms? Or is your territory greater than their territory? O oh, you that put far away the evil day and bring near a reign of violence. Alas, for those who lie on beds of ivory and lounge on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the stall who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and, like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. Lord God has sworn by himself, says the Lord, the God of hosts, I abhor the pride of Jacob and hate his strongholds. I will deliver up the city and all that is in it. If ten people remain in one house, they shall die. And if a relative, one who burns the dead, shall take up the body to bring it out of the house, and shall say to someone in the innermost parts of the house, Is anyone else with you? The answer will come, No. Then the relative shall say, Hush, we must not mention the name of the Lord. See, the Lord commands, and the great house shall be shattered to bits, and the little house to pieces. Do horses run on rocks? Does one plough the sea with oxen? But you have turned justice into poison, and the fruit of righteousness into wormwood. You who rejoice in Lodebar, who say, have we not by our own strength taken Karnaim for ourselves? Indeed, I am raising up against you a nation, O house of Israel, says the Lord, the God of hosts. And they shall oppress you from Lebo Hamath to the Wadi Arabah. Here ends the first lesson.
The sixth chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. When any of you has a grievance against another, do you dare to take it to court before the unrighteous instead of taking it before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try small, trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to be to judge angels, to say nothing of ordinary matters. If you have ordinary cases, then do you appoint as judges those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to decide between one be believer and another? But a believer goes to court against a believer, and before unbelievers at that. In fact, to have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud, and believers at that. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, male prostitutes, sodomites, thieves, the greedy, drunkards, revilers, robbers, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. This is what some of you used to be. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of our God. Here ends the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The anthem this evening is by Richard Shepherd, Never Weather Beaten Sail. The text is by Thomas Campion, and this song has a sense of a recurring theme in Campion's work, that the sacred and the secular are never far apart. Let us pray. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. And in the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Diocese of Pukedi, the Church of the Province of Uganda. We pray also for Rose, Bishop of Dover. And in our Diocese, we pray today for three benefices. St Paul's Maidstone, Limpney and Saltwood churches, and St Martin's Dover, who are piloting the scheme Bubble Church, working with children and families, and reaching out to parts of the community they are yet to connect with. We pray for Reverend Anthea Mitchell, curate at St Paul's Maidstone, and for her ministry and mission as a minister in secular employment. Lord God, in this season of Epiphany, as we celebrate Christ's glorious appearing to the world, we pray for your church that through our words and our deeds, we would reveal your glory in our lives. Light of lights, Jesus Christ, give us the love to seek you the humility to worship you, and the courage to speak of you to others. For you are indeed our God, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, show your kindness to all who are in need, that as they are met by your presence, they would find fulfillment in your love. God of mercy, you hear the cries of our hearts and speak to us your words of hope with gentleness and encouragement. Warm the hearts of those who struggle this day with pain and need. 
you who are with us always, be their protection in vulnerability, be their comfort in distress, and be their companion in abandonment through the love of one who knew joy and pain, friendship and desertion, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord our God, be our light on our path, that knowing you as our guide, we may find our way to our true home with you. O Lord God, you call all things back to yourself through Jesus Christ, the King of all. Be with each one of us on our journey through life, that however wandering, all our paths may be directed towards you and grant us faithful friends and wise counsellors to guide us as fellow pilgrims on the journey that lead us home through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. As you leave today, our stewards will be holding baskets to receive your cash donations, while there is also an electronic donation point for bank cards near the door as you leave. We ask you to be generous in your donation, as our music mission and care of our cathedral costs nearly £30,000 per day. Our thanks for your support. And now we stand to sing our hymn from the ancient and modern hymn books, number 703, Lead Kindly Light Amid the Encircling Gloom. <laughs> 